Okay, I'm reading from John chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Well, morning, folks. Uh, on a day like today, uh, I guess uh, there's many of us here today, we're all coming from uh, different places and perhaps feel differently about church and the Bible and Jesus and Christianity uh, and all of that. We all have different backgrounds, don't we? We're all coming from different places. Uh, and it can sometimes feel a little bit like Christianity is, well, it's grey and it's a bit like gruel, you know, gruel, and, uh, and, and it's for grannies. That's how it can feel sometimes, can't it? Sorry, grannies. But it can feel a bit like that, guys. It feels it's a bit grey and it's a bit, it's a bit like gruel. I've got some gruel here. This is my gruel. I made this this morning for my breakfast. Do you want to have a look at that, Josh? What do you reckon? Does that look tasty? No. It's, what do you, Marion's not so keen. Look at that. It's all, well, it's all gruely, isn't it? Basically, it's grey and it's, anyone else want a look? Go on, Bobby, you have a little look. Oh, look at that. Amazing what you can do with full of food colouring, isn't it? Um, look at that. It's, do you like, I'm not, I'm not going to eat some. But sometimes it can feel a little bit like Christianity's a bit like, it's a bit grey. It's a bit like for people who like eating gruel, you know, that's what we have three times a day, a little bowl of gruel. And, and, and it's for grannies. Now, let me say right from the beginning, Christianity is absolutely is for grannies, right? We love grannies, particularly in this church. We love grannies. We think grannies, I think grannies, I won't have a bad word said against any granny ever. All grannies are amazing. We love grannies. And Christianity absolutely is for grannies. And it's also for everyone else too. It's for all kinds of people. And um, well, uh, sometimes you think it's a bit like gruel, but uh, I would encourage you to stick around for the barbecue, okay? Because, well, we're not exactly sponsored by Slimming World, as you'll see. Um, but but, but it, can, it can feel a bit like that, can't it? Christianity, it's a bit grey, it's a bit dull, it's a bit drab, it's a bit boring, it's a bit plain, it's a bit bland. But actually, the Christian faith is all about life. That's what it's all about. That's the whole point. It's all about life, and we know that because of what Jesus uh, said. And um, We just saw that just in the reading a moment ago. If we could have it up, Jesus said that he came to give you life. That's what he said. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, he came to give you life. In fact, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Uh, and that's why Jesus came uh, into the world, as he says, if you want to just advance that for me. Um, if you'd lived in the right place uh, at the right time, about 2,000 years ago, you could have met Jesus. Uh, he really lived on earth. Jesus of, of Nazareth is a real historical character. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. And he lived and he walked and he talked and he, he said these things. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 
Jesus came into the world. That seems a bit of an odd way of saying it, doesn't he? We know that Jesus, the man, lived on earth, but he says he came into the world. Now, that is the cosmic claim of Christianity, that God the Son came down from heaven, was born as a baby boy in Bethlehem, and grew up to be the man Jesus as Nazareth. He, as Nazareth. he lived on earth. He came into our world came into your world he came into this world of uh, good things and sad things and bad things Jesus came into the world and he came to give you life now when you read the records of Jesus life when you look at this man what you see is that Jesus was incredibly life-giving all the time, that's what he was like. But you see, the thing is, Jesus came into a world and a culture and a religious culture that was, uh, well, the religious leaders of the day, they were always, always tutting, you know? Like people like that, they were always tutting, they were a bit self-righteous and they had all these rules and rules and rules and, and uh, don't do this and don't do that and don't touch this and don't, oh, you better not go near that because if you do that, then that might get near to doing that thing, which is bad. Do you know what I mean? It was like that all the time, following all of these rules, keeping up with all of these rules. And that way of living is incredibly draining <laughs> And it's also life-taking. It's not nice and it's not good. But Jesus came into that kind of life-taking culture and he was life-giving. Uh, Jesus um, spoke uh, life-giving words all the time when he's talking with people. He speaks life-giving words. And Jesus just gave people life. You know, people were ill and he healed them. People were blind and he gave them sight. Uh, even in John's account of Jesus' life, Jesus raised someone from the dead. He, he was life-giving all the time. Uh, there's an event earlier on in John's gospel there. Jesus is at a wedding and uh, they've run out of wine. So Jesus turns water into wine because you can't run out of wine at a wedding. You see, all the way through, he's life giving. Uh, Oscar Wilde uh, said, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. That is all. That's very perceptive, isn't it? He's on to something there. Uh, there's a difference between existing and living, truly living. Uh, and Jesus came to give you life. He came to give you uh, proper life, full-on life, life in a relationship with the God who made you. And he came to give us forever life as well, life beyond the grave. H how can Jesus give us this life that he offers, that he promises? Well, he laid down his life. The sad reality of, uh, of living in our world is that we're all a little bit like those guys back then. Uh, uh, we all can be a bit life-taking. Uh, not necessarily in that full sense of taking someone else's life, though you might have done that. Uh, but actually, just when we're angry, when we're cross, you know what it's like, kids? You just get cross with someone, we get bitter, we can be malicious in our hearts. And Jesus actually says all of that is like, taking someone else's life it's life taking we can be like that we in our selfishness or whatever it is we can be like that life taking and we're also all life wandering as well it's that picture isn't it of the sheep and the shepherd that's the picture that Jesus is using in John 10 uh, sheep that wander and stray they go off course they go off peace don't they uh, and we're like that too the Bible says that we wander and stray far from God. We get lost and we wander away from God. And in God's eyes, those two things, life taking and, and life wandering, they're not good. They're not good. And they're not good for us as well, but they're not good. And the penalty for those things is death. That's what the Bible tells us. The, the penalty for our life-taking and life-wandering is death. 
But the wonderful, glorious news of Christianity, and this is the centerpiece, this is the focus, is that Jesus died in our place. Uh, That's uh, what he says, doesn't he? That's the reality that he uh, describes there. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Um, Jesus isn't just kind of life-giving in that kind of nice general way, you know, gave people life and he spoke life-giving words. No, actually, Jesus gave up his life so that we could have life. On the cross, he laid down his life. He gave his life so you can have life. He lays down his life in your place. On the 29th of uh, July 2006, um, an airport, uh, an aeroplane was leaving an airport in, in Missouri and uh, the aeroplane was going up uh, and it was full of skydivers, a whole bunch of them, a lot of young people. And uh, there, were, there were a particular group of young people, they'd been on a kind of trek thing and this was their last sort of activity and they were all uh, up there in, in the plane and the idea was that you buddied up with an experienced skydiver. And so uh, Kimberly Deer was the 21-year-old from Melbourne. She was the young lady. She'd never done this before sort of thing. And she buddied up with a guy called Robert Cook. Now, Robert Cook had done 1,700 successful jumps. He he knew how to skydive. He was an experienced skydiver, and she buddied up with him. And as the day went on, as they were getting ready to go, Kimberly and her friend were sort of taking videos and pictures and filming stuff. And uh, eerily, at one point, Uh, Kimberly actually said uh, in one of the videos, laughing and joking, this is the guy who's going to save my life, pointing to Robert Cook. Uh, Well, the plane took off, and um, not long after it had taken off, it experienced trouble. The people on the ground heard a a loud bang. There was smoke coming out of the plane, uh, and those on board knew the plane's coming down. But it was too low uh, for anyone to parachute out, and Robert Cook knew what he needed to do. Robert Cook uh, told Kimberly what to do. He lay down on the floor of the aeroplane and he held Kimberly and he said, I'll take the impact. I'm going to take the impact when the plane hits the ground. And that's what he did. He knew what to do and he laid down his life in order to save Kimberly's. That's exactly what happened. He died in the process. He took the full impact of the crash landing and Kimberly survived. She lived. Uh, And uh, Robert Cook was awarded the Australian Star of Courage for his bravery. And that's what Jesus does for us. He takes the impact on the cross. He dies so that we can have life, so that we can live. How can you have this life? Uh, Well, uh, in uh, verse 9 of that chapter, Jesus says that it's through him, doesn't it? He says, whoever enters through me will be saved. I was playing tag with the kids uh, the other day. Kids, you'll have played tag many times. And sometimes when you're playing tag, you have like a a base, don't you? You have like a safe base, safeties or whatever. What do you call it, kids? Go on. What's that? Home. That's it. Yeah, that one. So you have like a base where you can be safe, don't you? And uh, Christianity is a little bit like that. It's not really about what we do. It's not about how good we are or what we've done or our moral or religious performance, the things that we do. No, it's about where we are. It's about where we are. And if we're connected to Jesus, if we're trusting him, if that's where we are, then we'll be safe because he's laid down his life so that we can have life. And all you need to do is turn to Jesus, turn from that life-taking and life-wandering and put your trust in Jesus for forgiveness and so that you can receive that life through him. It's what Lee and Emma have done. It's what we're celebrating uh, this morning, isn't it? Uh, That they have turned to Jesus and put their trust uh, in him and he has given them life. They've come to Jesus and they've found life through him. And what he can do for them, he can do for you too. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for everything that you have done for us, for Lee and Emma particularly today. And I pray that you would help us all to get to the point in our lives where we know 
and enjoy and fully experience life through Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen.